All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from all the way across the pond, as they like to say here, uh, by Reggie James, who is in Surrey, which is just outside of London. How are you doing, Reggie? I'm doing very well, John. It's an absolute pleasure um to meet you i've heard a lot about your show so okay. delighted to be on here thank you yeah absolutely and and reggie's a distinguished expert in marketing and digital strategy renowned for deriving transformative results for organizations with over three decades of experience he's the founder of digital clarity reg reggie leads a pioneering consultancy that empowers businesses to achieve their marketing goals and what we want to talk about today is the actual evolution of digital marketing, you know, lessons from a pioneer uh, such as Reggie, um, and and Reggie, let's let's dive straight into it, right? Um, everybody's everybody thinks they know what digital marketing is today, but it's interesting for you to go back and see where it came from and whether people really understand where it is today and where it's heading. Sure. Um, if I sort of start at the beginning, the my history was very much in the print ad space mm -hmm. and when the dot-com sort of boom happened a lot of the business models that were very much around the cpm models uh, so companies like yahoo aol etc they had huge amounts of traffic and they and a lot of people didn't know how to monetize them so the chaps and chapesses that actually knew how to monetize that kind of traffic were the ad sales guys and girls. So mm -hmm. they knew all about CPMs, cost per mile, that rather than using airtime, uh, they could actually use a page impressions to actually charge per thousand. And that's how the models that we have today started. That evolved into uh, when search came along, into using pay per click models. And then there was a sort of hybrid of the two and that's really the two core areas and digital marketing was really a, a way of actually outsourcing your marketing to an organization that could actually manage those campaigns for you that were dedicated into learning about analytics understanding how many clicks what happened post click where people go once they click on an ad etc Mm -hmm. both on display ads as well as search ads. So that's 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 advertising and digital marketing back in the early days. It's evolved a hell of a lot since then, and it's evolved really uh, as customers have involved, evolved. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has been driven by the change in buyer behavior. We work very much in the B2B space, so we are we have seen a huge shift in terms mm -hmm. of how B2B buyers engage, how the user journey has changed, and how digital marketing per se is, you know, if you're, if you're a, a company looking to hire, uh, for want of a better word, a digital agency, it's very, very difficult because the market, and I hate to say it's hugely commoditized, mm -hmm. very mainstream, a lot of people purport to um, say a lot of things, but don't actually deliver. And it's, as I say, it's very hard for people to differentiate the um, the good guys from the also right. rounds, if you like. Mm -hmm. And some of that's experience. Some of that's, um, you know, it's a whole variety of different things. Right. We sit in the middle, if you like, John. So we, we, we are very much about strategy. We're very much about, we don't do any of these sort of ad campaigns or anything like that. And right. we start at a very different start point. So we, um, we try and ch we're trying to change the model to try and help companies think differently, pivot a few degrees and actually think about what they're actually doing, actually create a strategy. Most people don't have a strategy. They have a plan, which is not mm -hmm. a strategy, which normally when we interrogate that is, is normally a, a kind of, to-do list yeah. um, and we help them think differently and actually think about who they are, who they serve, create some value propositions and a whole variety of other things. Yeah. So that's how it evolved a lot. Yeah. So uh, because today, um, Reggie, as you said, I mean, it's become rather commoditized and, and it's almost become this, uh, 
it's almost become this circular thing is my you know companies get you know startups get investment investment goes to marketing agencies the investment goes into google adwords and and all of that and 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 now with so many different ways and platforms and places that you can be people then start you know they start going well, well you need to be on this platform you need to be on that platform you need to be here and before you know it all your money's gone <laughs> and 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 you're not showing much results that that I hear that a lot. Um, that that's quite typical of uh, both well-funded startups and companies who are actually mm -hmm. fairly well established. So you know, some of the changes that we've seen is that you know people used to say that data was the new oil. Reality is that attention is mm -hmm. really the new oil. That's what people are after in that commoditized space. There's a lot of noise. And how do you cut through the noise? How do you, um, how does this convergence of marketing and sales, this whole new hybrid kind of mm -hmm. way, you know, I've heard the, the term RevOps being used quite a lot in organizations. There's a lot of, um, you know, buzzwords that fly around mm -hmm. from ABM to GTM, go to market. It's a whole host of things. When you distill that, one of the biggest changes that we've seen uh, and certainly I've seen over my long years uh, mm -hmm. in the market is the return to brand. It's the one thing that's making successful companies stand out. You, you know, there's a lot of um, wonderful lead generation techniques and there's a lot of um, demand generation techniques. But ultimately, unless you're changing how you're measuring success, unless you're changing the way you look at brand, because sometimes brand is all you have that differentiates mm -hmm. why one company will choose you over the others. Mm -hmm. And really one of the biggest things that we've seen alongside the return to brand and what the value is, you know, money's what you pay, mm -hmm. value is what you get, is the need for companies to understand, i.e. companies that, that are selling to other companies, is that it's really the buyer that's actually making the decision and the buyer is making their mind up passively before they even contact you. There's a great report by Gartner and, and a few other uh, people. Uh, McKinsey have done another report about the continuous omni channel and they've done a huge amount of research alongside some of the data that we look at as well that now a buyer will actually engage with you but don't necessarily uh, want to buy from you there and then. So if they download a, 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 an ebook, if they ask for information from you, if they are sending you an email and saying, hey, we're interested in your in your mm -hmm. technology stack or whatever it might be, the, the last thing you want to be doing is putting them on a prospect list and bombarding them with, hey, it's me. Yeah. You downloaded our thing. How can we help you? Uh, never do that because you're, you're going to lose the client all that that prospective client all that customer prospective customer wants to do is learn and what you should be doing is help educate them on who you are help nurture that client prospective client into what you can do and the challenges you solve mm -hmm. and though it sounds simple that's what you need to do and i think it's summarized by linkedin's 95 5 rule um which very clearly states that 95% of buyers are not in play when they're engaging with you, only 5% are. Right. What you want to be doing is educating that 95% when you, you know, once you realize who your customers are, and believe you me, a lot of businesses don't, they're mm -hmm. going after everyone. Yeah. And and that's, that's really what we help distill. We help filter out all the fluff. We help our customers understand and really, as I say, use that, that yeah. terrible pivot to actually understand who they are, why they should be the ones, and then create those touch points yeah. to help those customers find them mm -hmm. and build that value. Yeah, so there's a couple of things I wanted to come back to on, on what you just said there, Reggie. Uh, you know, the first thing is, is you know, return to brand and brand. And I, think that's a, and I think that's an often misunderstood thing. You know, what does brand actually mean today? I mean, there's still people who believe, you know, brand is just your logo and your colors or whatever and in your tagline. So just go back and explain, like, return to brand. What, what, are, the, what are the essential components of a brand? 
that that is a fantastic question. Um, if you take a, if we again, if we take a step back a little bit, normally uh, conversations within organisations are things like, and this is the broad church of brand. What is the name of our company? What is the name of our product? Mm -hmm. What is how do we want to come across? Who are our customers? What do our customers think of us? How do we want our customers to feel? Um, how do we want our prospective customers to feel? How do people view us? How do people think of us? All of those come under that umbrella of brand. And brand is really the essence of who you are. I think somebody summed up by saying, it's what people say about you when you're not in the room. Mm. Yeah. And that's and that is when you have a, a strong brand and under that brand, you've got all these different components, things like value propositions. You know, it's not just a value proposition for uh, your company, uh, but it has to be a value proposition for absolutely every single aspect of your department. So that we when we are working with our clients, one of the, 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 the strongest areas we focus on is looking at before you get to the essence of your brand it, you have to understand all the different com components of what makes your brand so what is it you do what is it you do well what is the value that you add all the experience all those things and then distill that into a level of messaging a level of positioning a level of niche sometimes niching down on a niche Mm -hmm. So you become very focused. And from that, you start to see, you see these kind of um, uh, eureka moments when, you know, when you're sitting in a room or, or on, a, on a Zoom call, as you have nowadays, and yeah. people sort of see, you You can almost hear the penny dropping. And people say, hey, we're not that thing at all. We're actually more this. And, you, and we're helping guide them because right. they're really discovering who they are. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very um, almost... Um, I use the word spiritual, but as you're in California, <laughs> I'm sure I can use that. Um, mm. But it is it is a real uh, epiphany kind of moment when people actually realize that they've been going that way yeah. and really what they should have been doing was going that way. Mm -hmm. And when they actually speak to their customer, the customer said, yeah, we we, we didn't really want all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. We really didn't want this bit. Yeah. And that's, that, that's where why brand is becoming more and more of a thing more yeah. and more of a um an important um thing but you can't have a brand without having a strategy yeah and it's a bit like um, the most successful companies make it look very easy they're like uh, icebergs you know you only see the mm -hmm. you only see successful but you don't see the uh yeah. all of that that mass of stuff underneath or the swan gliding along and not yeah. seeing the paddling and all the other bits. furiously, yeah, 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 all of those bits, absolutely, yeah. John. So, yeah, that, uh, the, other thing, cool. the other thing you mentioned because strategy, I think, is incredibly important. But you were mentioning about you know education and meeting you know buyers where they are and you know helping to educate them, and that is and and obviously over the last uh, number of years with the whole inbound and all of that. I mean, it's become this whole thing about oh, capture them, gated, you know, get them, then you know, then just hammer them afterwards, and it's all almost like i mean we all have this it's funny how we all have this experience ourselves but then we go into companies and we do the same things to other people it's like i just want some information and then you put it in and suddenly oh no i'm blown up by just being bombarded and you're just saying like all i wanted was to learn a little absolutely i, I think when we go into companies we we know that there are it's they're stuck in very old traditional ways not even old mm -hmm. um but in I could probably use the word pre-pandemic days. Yeah, yeah. So it's very much about um, we've got to hit the numbers. It's it's where you've got to fill the pipeline. We've got to you know we've got to do all of these. You know, um, our CRM is saying this. We're using mm -hmm. sales. We're using HubSpot. Using all these things. We've got SDRs. We've got the, we've got this whole thing. And and one of the things I say is if I get a group of directors in a room or or they, I've got the, I've got the uh, chief revenue officer and the CMO in the room and the, and the CEO and whoever else uh, in the room, I, I I always start with giving them a piece of paper or online, getting them to write down, write down what your company does. 
Don't mm-hmm. discuss it with anyone else. And then tell me what your goals are for the company. We have about four or five different questions to, to kick things off. Yeah. And when they turn that paper over, when they share that, you can bet your bottom dollar that every single thing that they those five people give are completely different. <laughs> And that's at the top of the tree. Mm-hmm. So that's their communication with each other. And of course, there's going to be different nuances in terms of, you know, if you've got a different function. Sure. However, fundamentally, you should know you, there should be a central line in terms of what your company actually does. Because if sales thinks you do one thing, marketing thinks you do another thing yeah. and the ceos at the top of the bar thinking that they both know how things do. um you know george bernard shaw said that the, the challenge with communication is the belief that it's taken place mm. and we have an assumption that when we and we get very very deep in this because we get right under the skin of our customers uh, if they're open to it, because what we do is available to everyone, but it's not for everyone. If that right. Sense. Because you've got to be willing to change. You can't be empire building in your organization where sales are down here and, and marketing mm-hmm. everywhere, and the twins you meet. But the reality of it is, is that if you are not engaging, it's an organizational thing. Marketing yeah. for us, and we talked about, you know, the, the evolution of marketing, marketing is everything there you know fedex changed the company around even though a b2b fedex is a great great example where mm-hmm. they realized that the guys and girls delivering and picking up the parcels and opening the door and bringing in the you know the trash from mm-hmm. outside and helping them and remembering your your things they were front of house they were the brand yeah. they yeah. were the they are what people see so like should we use that courier company when we're doing this should we no, we're using FedEx. Yeah, yeah. Because we know it's when I use them, it's that guy that I see in this smart uniform with this baseball cap. I know it's going to get there yeah, because he yeah. brings stuff in. He helps, you know, and he's he's smiling and he's there. And they change the whole thing and, and everything else. And if you look at the FedEx brand, if you look at it very carefully, and you probably know this, I'm teaching you to suck eggs, you will see that there's an arrow forward. Yeah. FedEx, yeah, yeah. very cleverly done. A bit like Amazon's A to Z, A, arrow, Z. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 fascinating because that's the thing. I I think that people often overlook that your brand is is the the tip of the spear is often your salespeople. It's your customer support people. It's the it's the people who are directly engaging. And therefore, as you said, I mean, if you're getting one message in mark, if you know when marketing sending out one message, but your interaction with sales is you're getting a different one. You're getting a different one. Customer service, obviously, your interpretation of the brand is dependent on who you who you spoke to it's funny you say fedex because also on uh ups you know you can't you can't uh get a job like an executive role or anything like that in the company until you have to go they say wear the brown you have to go out and actually deliver first so you've got a certain period of time when you got to go out and deliver so you actually understand uh you know what it's like at the front line but i think that's the thing that a lot of people are missing is that the customer experience has many different touch points and if you're not if you're not communicating a, a uniform message, uh, then, as I said, it's dependent on who you interact with. Very much so. And I think, I th- you know, you've hit a, a very, very strong point there that that there are numerous touch points for our customers, prospective customers to, or, or mm-hmm. you know, the clients that yeah. we work with to engage with. And it's really important that that, that our clients understand what those touch points are. Because you're never going to get a sale, you know. It's understanding the essence of what their pain points are. I mean, these are very old-fashioned terms. You know, why do people buy? You're either going to solve a problem or create an opportunity. Yeah. And I think that, that you know, and, and various degrees in between. But, but again, distilling those things down, where does your product fit in to the customers that you're looking to serve? You know, again... Simon Sinek summed it up in, in Start With Why. It is still one of the most talked about and watched TED Talks. Mm-hmm. The reality is it's still so valid and yeah. so powerful today that if companies, if they, they don't understand why they exist, they're going to really struggle to get any sales message or marketing communication across 
internally as well as externally and sometimes half the job is internally as well mm. the, again there's a perception that everyone's going to know what the company does yeah the reality is somewhat different no no ab absolutely and just a just a final uh, point as well is you know we're hearing a lot about authenticity and all at the moment right um mm. and i love the thing about when people are going around saying i can teach you how to be authentic i was thinking wow that seems pretty inauthentic to me but hey whatever um i'm going to teach you how to be authentic yeah, yeah. five point plan yes. exactly exactly <laughs> But I think that's a key element now. And you say, because you mentioned like uh, pre pandemic, I think it was already starting to happen as people wanted to reconnect. They wanted to, they wanted to understand who you are. They wanted to connect with humans. They wanted to feel that there was something authentic there. I think the pandemic accelerated that. And I think that's the key. One of the key elements now is if you're going to say you're something, you better be it. Totally. Well, let's look at that. Merriam-Webster's word of the year 2023 is authentic. Mm. And it was one of the most searched for terms on Google and various other places. And the reason being is that we live in a world where AI, mm -hmm. we've got deep fakes, we've got automation in lots of things going on. You know, I, I can sometimes, you know, get, get these emails coming in or LinkedIn messages which you just know they're on a sequence, they're not yeah. even thought through. And it's about, you know, just throwing stuff at the wall. Authenticity, genuine authenticity can only be discovered if you understand who you are, if you understand what your company does, if you're honest about not only who you are, who you're not mm -hmm. as well. So you can really focus. And again, one of the, you know, one of the key points of our, Four point program and, and the strategy that we help customers with and it's to really about helping them and serving is to is to guide people you cannot this cannot be prescriptive mm -hmm. we can only help people we can guide companies if they want to genuinely change because change people want the six pack but they don't want to do <laughs> the six months they don't want to do the six months they do want to wake up at 5 a.m and do the run they don't want to go, you know, yeah. do the diet, you know, and it's it's that kind of thing that we tell our we tell our clients, listen, there's no quick fix here. Yeah. If you yeah. want a quick fix, you'll be doing this in two years' time. Right, 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 make right. Make the yeah. change now. Make the change now. You know, everyone goes to it's great. I was listening to a great sales trainer the other day, and he's saying that everyone goes to you can go to university for learning so many things and there's now even courses on ai and ai mm -hmm. engineering and there is still to this day there is no sales university and there is no you know not that you need a degree in it but there's there's so many different aspects of sales yeah. and marketing that are so multi-dimensional that you can't just stick them into one kind of thing and, and just mm -hmm. hope that it's going to work yeah. uh, because you're kind of um uh, you know spray and pray or pray is better. I don't yeah yeah that. spray and pray yeah no it, it, it's, very, it's, it's very true it's very true and people are still doing it to this day and they're actually putting a lot of their perspective customers off yeah 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 it can be damaging um so so yeah so authenticity spot on absolutely yeah. spot on John. it's it is the it is the number one thing and you can't um you know you've got to find your deep down and find the soul of the business and accentuate that because once that shines, everything else will fall into place. And yeah. then all those different building blocks that we talked about will help. There's no point trying to run an ad campaign on LinkedIn with that before you, because you, your messaging will be all wrong. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And I, if I could, and, and I think um, the worst feature LinkedIn has ever put or in recent years was that automated email reply you know when you get a when you get a request from somebody for connecting and it's all lovely personalized and, hey, yeah. and you think oh this is okay fine i'll connect yeah. with you and then ping it does yeah. a sales pitch comes automated and i'm like oh okay seriously yeah. <laughs> unconnect yeah Do exactly, exactly. Yeah. It, it it is a very very annoying thing but that that is the that is the post-pandemic area that we need a, a, a broom to sweep the, um, you know, those things. The people who are being authentic, the people who are rebuilding and re-looking mm -hmm. at who they are and what they do and why they do it are the ones, you know, if you, 
if you don't do it now, you know, you're going to regret, you know, you're yeah. going to regret it in 12 months time. Believe you me. Exactly. So exactly. start that work now. Yeah. It's that, uh, it's that old one. What's the best time to plant a tree about 20, 40 years ago? And the second best time is today. Um, is right now. Well, listen, Reggie, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing all those insights. All of Reggie's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell us a little more about you and your company. Thank you very much again, John. It's been an absolute pleasure. So again, my name is Reggie James. You can type me into, into, into Google or you can type me into LinkedIn. The company is Digital Clarity. We are based in London, but we operate globally. And we are a wholly owned subsidiary, get my teeth back in, of <laughs> a public company called DBMM Group uh, that trades on the OTC in the US. And yeah, and, that, and that's, and we are a marketing strategy consultancy. We help your business grow, we give you direction, and we have a very, very successful plan that's been honed over 30 years of experience. And that's who we are. So thank you again, John. Yeah, fantastic, Reggie. Well, I would uh, I would encourage you to go check out uh, check out um, Reggie and Digital Clarity. Uh, as we were just talking, there's lots and lots and lots of ways you can lose a lot of money by just like spray and praying all over these platforms. So go get your strategy in place <laughs> and go probably save you a ton of money in the long run. Absolutely, John. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks again, Reggie. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.